can Jeezy be a better lyricist than Talib Kweli in some circles, even though he isn't as technical? I'm just going to be real. Y'all know I'm not a big on Jeezy like that. But I think that people feel Jeezy's material more than they do. Uh, I don't want to say people. I think that there's a large faction of people who feel Jeezy's music more than they do Talib's. And I think that's a connection thing. It's probably a, a background thing, per se, maybe. But Jeezy is exciting. And he gets people excited. And he's right there with the production. And he says things that stand out. Now, how many people can quote Talib over Jeezy? You would have to be like a real head to do that. I am probably could quote more Talib stuff than Jeezy, but the average listener is probably going to be able to quote more Jeezy. Hey. <laughs> Mad Max of the Super Chat says, all, um, all a lyricist is is someone who paints a picture using words, literary devices, metaphors, similes, a.k.a. punchlines, and having conceptual schemes in poem format. That's a lyricist. Yeah, and it's back to that whole notion of people saying Tupac's not a lyricist. He's clearly oh, a lyricist. He's a perfect. poet by nature. Go ahead. E.T. Aliens Hell on Earth matchup is perfect. It's 14 and 14. I, I figured it did. Well, I did it in my head. I remember I the Outcast like having 15 in the back of my mind. I'm like, hold on, ain't there a remix at the end though? And it is. It's the Elevators remix. Mm -hmm. That's song 15. Like I said, my most great rap albums, under 15 is usually the song cap. 15 is usually the song cap on your rap classic. It is. There's there are very few exceptions. It's dark and hell is hot. Get rich or die trying. Moment of truth. End of story. All your other all time <laughs> great albums have less than fifteen songs or less, including Ready to Die. What Ready to Life Die says seventeen. Huh? Life after death's different though. That's that's not fair. You yeah, get what different. I'm saying? And even then, and even then, Mike. I mean, think about it. It's like, well, if you were just separating them by disc, how many songs is it by disc? Yeah. Eleven and eleven. Yeah. Right? Or 12 and 12? Something like that? 12 and 12? I got some categories I want to go through with you before we get out of here. That's cool. Um, we already talked about Versity here. But off the top right now, what would you say is just your flat-out Versity year? No nominees, just straight-up Versity year. <laughs> is it Johnny P's? No, nah, it's thought on Aquamarine. If okay. I'm just picking one, if I'm picking one verse right now, I think what you're going to find is, is that this is what I mean, cream rises to the top. And so it's like, you know, Nas probably has the most verse contenders like he did last year. But unlike last year, I, I think Lauren's know. like, this is what I mean. Like, well, you got to be special when Nas is on his shit to fade him. It's like Lauren couldn't do it. I think thought may have slightly. But but also, too, that's what I mean. I think the the mission was kind of different for KD3 to give us that complete. Right album body work like that and so like magic was your lyrical mic display you know what i'm saying that was the nas the supreme lyricist and you got that right. you know what i mean like damn near everything on magic would win verse of the year right now you feel me i got these categories from um our 2018 um uh, i guess wrap up or whatnot and this was just on according to hiphop.com another category i had from back then was Comeback Artist of the Year. I guess we would say Comeback Artist of Group. I'm going Black Star with that, obviously. Give me two seconds, Mike. Hold yeah. on But I'll probably be with you on the Black Star. Two seconds. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Uh, so you guys got Johnny P's Caddy over Aquamarine. Hmm. I mean, bar for bar, could we really say? I mean, I, I guess if you look from an impact standpoint, you know, more people would probably gravitate to, you know, Johnny P's Caddy because it was it was out there like that. It was a single. It was a big song for the most part. And, you know, Cole was stellar. And it always stands out a little bit more when you're a featured artist and you're collaborating with somebody else. But if we're talking about bar for bar, I might have to agree with Coop on this one. I might have to go to Aquamarine verse is a better verse. Than the Johnny P's Caddy verse, but I, I do understand how Johnny P's Caddy would stand out with Cole pairing up with Benny the Butcher, who another great MC. And <coughs> See, doing this what is he what, did. This, this is what I mean about the lyricists too. Is that like well, on Johnny P's Caddy, you can tell that Cole's intentions are lyrical. On 
Aquamarine, you can tell that Thought's intentions are lyrical. Nas's mission on KD3 is more of a black empowerment complete album message. And so it's not going to be as lyrical. Like some of what's lyrical about it is the message. You know what I'm saying? Like mm-hmm. the WTF SMH, the second verse. Oh, well, that's not super lyrical. But if you're like listening to it, it's very Tupac white in the connectivity of it. Right. You know? Mo Better uh, with the Super Chat says, I have to be honest. Cheat codes has been drawing has been drawing back to that more. Th- I've been drawing back to that more than KD three and KD. It's dope, but it's just something about the music on Cheat Codes, man. Okay, Cheat Codes is great, you know, and we have Cheat Codes at top three. I mean, we can go back and listen to that, you know, since it's the end of the year too, and just kind of pair things up. But you know, I hate to say it, man. I'm, I'm I know they say it's a Nas channel and this and that. But KD3 is tough to beat, just the versatility and the range. Like I said, I think it's the most complete hip-hop album I've heard in a minute, a long minute. Oh, um, somebody called me out, and they're right about this, too. Only Built for Cuban Link has more than 15 tracks, and they're right. Okay. But what is it? It's what, 16? Something like that. Like, you take the intro away, I believe it's 17 tracks. Yeah, because you're taking like out skits seven. and stuff, you know what I mean? Oh, actually, no, it's not. Hold on. No, yeah. it's not. Hold on. It might be 15. I think it's 15. Hold on. Um, Comeback Artist of the Year, like I said, I got Black Star. No, I'm with you on that. I'm, I'm saying, like, hmm, hmm. Yeah, I'm cool with that. Slept On Album of the Year. I'm going um, Rome Streets, man. It's hard for us, with all the love we've given Griselda and how much we talk about blow for blow, to call that slept on necessarily. Do I you think feel that, that way, even, honestly? Even the props that we're giving blow for blow, it's, it's kind of about the guys that are on there, too. Damn right. Um, I could say Liz, too, is possibly in that category. I was thinking about Liz, too, actually. If I, if I was going to pick something from the camp, because I think she... Hmm. What do y'all think is the most slept-on hip-hop album of 2022? Right. Like, you know, Earl Sweatshirt dropped sick earlier this year. Um, some people enjoyed that. Um, let me pull up my list right quick. I'm doing, like, two it's different things. James right is slept on. Okay. Uh, producer okay. of the year, I got here. Currency and Alchemist, Continuance, uh, maybe? Continuance. Currency and yeah, Alchemist, Continuance. Yeah, you know what? Comes. Continuance, because... I think that it got buried in such a heavy year. It started off the year so strong and then kind of got buried. Yeah, I'm, th- I'm thinking that's the one that I see that I would pick. Okay, so we got Liz 2, Currency, Continuance, and we got Rome Streets. Um, I love that Rome Streets album. Um, producer of the year, I got Hit Boy. Yeah. Do you think Food for Thought could be in the slept on category? Hmm. I guess you could say that. You could say that. You know, from just the overall, you know, hip hop stratosphere, obviously we're not underrating it, but just from the game all around. Uh, 36 Chambers says, Your old drools is slept, is slept on of a year. Ah. Uh. I Yandy think the Danger currency in the Alchemist stuff. is slightly better than the Your Old Drew album. And then we got Song of the Year. I think Aquamarine is that too, right? Yeah, I think a lot of the lyricists of the year contenders or the Song of the Year contenders think Mike and Quincy. Like, here's the thing. Okay, so let me ask you something. What's the better production job? Because I think Mike and Quincy is probably the production job of the year. Hmm. And so are you sure that it's the Aquamarine is better than Mike and Quincy would be my question for you. Like, are you certain? As a, as a full song, yes, I am. Okay. As a okay. full song, yes, I am. Now, okay. the beats and all that stuff, you know, that could be debated. Um, okay. All right, so this category, and this is 2018, mind you. We had this record of the year, and Pusha T won that for the, uh, you know, Adidon. This mm-hmm. record of the year is the Black Slim Shady, you know, whatever. Um, freestyle of the mm-hmm. year. Is it? I guess. It I is. guess, Mike. It is. It is. I mean, is there another diss record this year? That I mean, you know what? If this record was so weak, Eminem could have easily won this category, right? 
Um, freestyle of the year. I got Saha on the LA Leakers. I'm cool with that. Music video of the year. Now is this skip? Is this Just... cheating? I think that Metro Boomin video. But see, that was more of like a collaboration of a few songs. Right. Um, yeah, music videos is hard now, man. People don't really watch music videos like that. At least I don't. What do y'all think? Like, Can I what? ask you something? Yeah. <clears throat> is Peppa's song of the year? I think Aquamarine's the better song, but, I, you know, I don't know. Are you sure? I'm going to have to think about it. Just to I be think sure. we should think about that because Peppa's, when, when it comes on, it's, I don't know. It's just something to think about. <laughs> Terminated 2 says Eminem Coward of the Year. Y'all are wild. Y'all Album wild. of the Year, KD3. Um, MC yeah. Collaboration Album. Because I, I think in that year, it was when Styles P... And Dave East made an album together. Oh, that type of collab. Because um, it was two categories. It was MC producer collabo, and it was MC collabo. Well, the MC producer collabo is Nas and Hip Boy. Yeah, it is. So let's see about the uh, MC collab. Is that what you're saying? Yeah, so like really two think... MCs oh. coming together. Or what are you, um, Paul Wall and Terminology? Ah, it's a good one. Yeah, I was thinking about the Crit Wiz and Diz. Uh, well, Dizzle, well, that's more of a collaboration that's, that's, album. That's a collaboration of project, too. and I'm fact, thinking that, that might be, be in that collaboration project list too. That I think that good. might be Mount Westmore. What collaboration album of the year? Yeah, no, I'm with that. I enjoy. I'm, actually, I'm that at the could, list. actually that I'm goes under the MC collaboration category, really. Right. Doesn't that fall under the yeah. MC collaboration category? Yeah, it's Mount Westmore. Yeah. Do you yeah. think that Mount Westmore is better than the terminology in Paul Wall? Because I don't want to just discount that because I that do terminology because of Ice in Paul Wall was dope. Okay. No, Ice Cube's like that. Okay. Ice Cube's the determining factor in that. I think both the albums are dope and comparable, but that nigga Ice Cube's top 10. So, Rookie of the year. And this is always difficult to do now because, you know, it's people kind of, yeah, it's like rookies are kind of subjective. Everybody's kind of been around. But I would say the person that really made a splash in this year, I guess maybe had a breakthrough year as a newer artist. I would say that's Lotto. We could, I think maybe we should change that to call it the come up artist of the year. Okay. I think that's The artist that came up the most, the come up artist of the year. Yeah. So that would be, I'm cool with Lotto being that. Um, I got free. What about OG album of the year? That was a category. I think Too Short won it that year, where like an OG came through. Was that Cool G Rap? Or KRS One? Oh, yeah. Huh. I think the KRS One might be a little better I than think Cool so G too. Rap. I think so too. So KRS One with I'm, I'm an MC. But also, too, kind of not fair to G because we just got G's product in our hand. We done had KRS product all year. Right. But. We got to make decisions. But shout out to G-Rap. You know, always. You know, I love some G-Rap. MC of the year, Nas. 36 Chambers with the Super Chat says, Peppers is great, but not better than Aquamarine. Okay. Okay. I'm just asking questions. I just want I just want us to be, like, fair and balanced about it because, yeah. Okay. So, collaboration album. With, well, compilation album of the year. So, that would be with the Dreamville and those things. I think that's the toughest category, to be honest with you. Let's look at what we have. Just a matter of fact, because I think I want to write this down because I'm going to have to. We got Dreamville, right? Mm-hmm. We got the Long Live DJ Shea, right? Yeah. We got the Metro, right? Yeah. Um, what one did we just, what one was we just talking? There's more. Well, we were talking about the Alchemist, but they're saying that was old stuff, so. Yeah, no, four tracks on there from 2018 for certain, so that is disqualifying it because it got released. Mm-hmm. So this is a repackage of four of those records. Yeah. It's crazy. That was Conway in 2018. Crazy. Crazy. 
I yeah. told you, people, people, I told you you've been nice for a minute, minute. Mm -hmm. um, what are we missing? Uh, the shade. I, I was going to say Snoop has some compilations going on. I thought that was last year. He did one this year, too, didn't Death yeah. Row Summer? Yeah, Death Row yeah, Summer, did. yep. Yep, Death Row Summer. Um, yeah, Mulholland Drive was my joint. Death Row Summer. What else we got? Because I feel I like, like we're missing more. something. Huh? I said, I feel like we're missing something. Is uh, We are. We are. Westmore sure. go in that category, too, or no? Oh, the Crit Wizard. The Crit Wizard. Oh, Disney. yeah. I really like that album. Now, I, I, really, I enjoyed that album. Again. Me too. That album was fun. It was. It's like that's the type of album that made me want to hear Slick Rick on it. It's like, man, Slick Rick would be great with these guys. I, you know, I loved hearing them together, and it was a combination that I didn't even really expect to hit in that kind of way. Thirty Six Chambers says, uh, "Could JID be come up artist of the year?" Uh, yeah, he's been around for years. Yes, he has. But that um, Imagine Dragons song hit billions of streams this year. And he got mainstream notoriety with the Forever Story and Stick. I don't, thoughts. I don't know if it's like Lotto's glow up this year though, because Lotto was working with Mariah Carey. That's what I'm saying. Like you got Mariah, Nikki. You know what I'm saying? Megan. Like yeah, she. She's a household well, name at this point. She I mean, is. She's doing her thizzle. And I mean, JID's had a great year, but again, he's kind of been around for a minute. A little South Side, East Side, Atlanta battling for Come Up Artist of the Year. Right. Yeah. Mad Max to the Super Chat says, uh, most left on album is Dub Aurora. Uh, this one, this one's on me, LOL. Most left on artist is my son, Kerr, and Glow is Rookie of the Year. Her or Ice Spice, LOL. I like the Ice Spice choice. They're saying Glorilla for Rookie of the Year. 